Okay, so today we're going to be taking a look at virtual data points. We're going to see what they are, how we can use them, and why we might use them. We're going to have a bit of a focus on efficiently using AWS resources to get the most out of them and therefore get the most out of our money that we're spending on our AWS environment. So a virtual data point is, in essence, just performing any calculation on a currently existing data point. So you can use it to convert um, units or combine different data points together for various reasons. So let's take a look at just that. I've just opened up a new devices tab. We'll see why in a moment. Uh, but let's just go ahead and add a widget. So here we go. And we're going to do a custom graph. And what we're going to be looking at is to start with, we're just going to look at the free disk space on our RDS units. So let's say free disk just to be clear, it's on our RDS. Now, I'm going to want this to be done in gigabytes. We're going to see why that's relevant in a bit. I'm just going to leave min value and max value blank for the moment. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to allow the graph to automatically scale uh, with the values that it pulled from the data point. So let's start to bring in that data point. So we know we're looking at our AWS environment and we know we're looking at RDS. Um, I'm going to bring in all the devices, and the data source will just be RDS. So we're going to look at all the instances we have of that, and we've got a load of data points here. Now, just by looking at this, I can see free storage space is the one that I'm going to be after, but this isn't going to show all the data points available. And it might be that you don't know what you're after is what, it, what it's called. So in order to... Uh, deal with that. That's why I opened up this uh, other devices tab here. So let's open that up, take a look at RDS. So close down that one, open up RDS, any instance of it, and take a look at that RDS data source. And you can see here, these are all of the data points I could use. There's free storage space, and actually it's quite good that we did come to look at this, because you can see these numbers are quite big. If I was to take a guess, I'd say that they're reporting in bytes. And as I said earlier, I want to do this in gigabytes. So this isn't right. Let's just make sure that is in bytes first of all. So I'm going to go to the global definition. And it's going to open up that data source. And we can take a look at the data points and see what we've set. So if I scroll down to the bottom of this data source here, we've got the data points. There's free storage space. And yeah, you can see it's reported in bytes there. So that, now that we know that that is definitely the case, we can correct for it. So I'm just going to save this. I'm going to leave it as top 10. won't really make much difference. We've only got three RDS units. But if you had uh, a, a very big AWS environment with a lot of RDS uh, devices there, then it, will, um, it means that the graph won't be as cluttered. So actually what I'm going to do here is select this option that says virtual data point. And that's actually grayed out. You can't use that until you've added in a previous data point. So let's give it a name, and this will be free space in gigabytes. And what we do is we just go insert data point, free storage space, and then divide by 1,000 to get to kilobytes, 1,000 more to get to megabytes, and then 1,000 to get to gigabytes. You can see here you can scale by units of 1024. You'll want to do that if you're working with memory, with RAM, essentially. Um, for storage space, it tends to just be thousand units of 1,000. So all I then need to do is tell it to draw that second line, the free space in gigabytes, and save that. And you can see it's then corrected these numbers. It's given me it in gigabytes, and I can see the free space there in gigabytes rather than in bytes. So let's see how we can use this idea of virtual data points to actually help us get the most out of our, um, our AWS environment here. Let's add another widget. It's going to be another custom graph, of course. And this one will be looking at the EC2. Oh, not that. EC2 CPU usage. Now, if I wanted, I could take a quick look over here. Take a look at the, uh, not EBS, EC2. And look at one of the instances here and see... Yeah, CPU utilization. Already it's looking pretty low, which is going to be interesting for us. So 
let's add that in. Now the y-axis will just be labeled in percent. Again, I'm going to leave the minimum and maximum value blank. And let's add in that data point. So all, actually, uh, EC2, all the devices, it was on that EC2 data source, all instances of it, and then it was CPU utilization right there. Again, leave it as top 10. So I'm going to add a virtual data point now and say I want to bring in the idle usage or the unused CPU. Uh, and all I'm going to do is do 100 minus that to get the inverse of it. So let's draw that. Let's tell it data point is the idle and save this here. And there it is. So we're seeing we've got six or seven rather, can't count, EC2 instances. Uh, and they are all fairly underused. Now, in theory, I could combine those. So if that was the case over a long period, in fact, this is the last seven days, then I could uh, tell it to combine that. I could you know, try and combine those devices into one device to save me money on my AWS resources. Certainly, if they're running similar applications, uh, if you've got a big environment with multiple instances of, say, SQL running, uh, you could do that and use this to combine underused resources. Now, the reason I want to do this as a virtual data point like this is if I tried it any other way, my two options basically are to do a top 10 uh, graph to keep it uncluttered, but that would only show me the 10 most used, and that would basically, in a very active environment, they would all be pretty close to 100% used. Uh, if I did it as just show all, so not the top 10, it would then be really quite cluttered, as I said before. So doing it this way means I can just see the 10 least used, the 10 that I'm getting the least um, performance out of, and look to consolidate some of those together. Okay, so hopefully that's been useful for you. If you want to see any more examples of how you can use virtual data points, what sort of um, uh, functions you can use in them, take a look at our documentation or get in touch with support. And if you have any questions about the video or suggestions for future videos you might want to see, get in touch with us via the email address on the end slide. Uh, again, I hope this has been useful. Thanks for watching.